If you've been watching my channel for a while, you might have seen one of my recent on location videos where uh, I was using a 105 millimeter wide angle lens that didn't quite have enough image circle coverage. And I ran into some pretty harsh vignetting in the corners of my film. Uh, and after doing some research and realizing my mistake, I uh, decided to replace that lens. I actually bought a handful of new lenses that I want to take out and shoot with over a few videos. Uh, but today what we're looking at is this guy. That's my 90 millimeter Nikon Nikkor F4.5 that I bought as a direct replacement for that 105. So we're going to take this guy out and shoot with it, uh, see how it does. So stick around. Sorry if it's hard to hear, but I'm right next to the water and it's really loud, so uh, I'll do my best to speak up. Uh, but I came across this spot next to a creek in this canyon where uh, really nice scenic walk, lots of trees, runoff water just coming from the mountains. I set up the wide angle lens, the 90 millimeter Nikon up on the scene here, just kind of shooting an area that's kind of some falls, got some rapids in it. Uh, super pretty and there's a lot of motion in the water so this is going to be really this is probably going to be pretty soft uh my exposure time was about two seconds on this so the water is going to be completely blurred i expect Got a little bit of daylight coming in. Uh, it's been a little overcast today, so it's a little kind of muted, but there are some highlights. They're, they're pretty bright compared to the shadows. Uh, so there's a lot of dynamic range in the scene, especially with the white and the rapids. Uh, so I hope I metered that correctly. Uh, but I ended up putting my polarizer on actually to try to knock some of the glare down on the water, which didn't really take the highlights out of the water, but it did take the glare off of some of the rocks and stuff. So. That added some exposure just because of the polarizer uh, darkening the overall scene. But what I ended up with was two seconds at F45. Shot one sheet of Throbia 100 on this with my Nikon 90 millimeter lens. So that's the first sheet of film with that lens. So hopefully that turns out because it'd be super cool to see how see how that lens performs. There's quite a bit more water than I expected. Utah's been in a drought lately, so I wasn't sure what to expect. But there's still some meltwater coming down from the mountains. Fortunately, or we'd have nothing to drink. Uh, but there's quite a bit of movement in the water still. I'm expecting all the water to be completely soft, which is cool. It's just kind of a feature of large format. Your exposure time is always longer, so uh, I'm sure it'll look just fine. But that's about it. Just super pretty scene of some, you know, flowing rapids coming down the mountain. There's a road in the back of my composition, so I had to kind of time it with the cars going by. Uh, but exposure time of two seconds is pretty easy to do. I just had to wait for traffic to pass. Not a big deal. Uh, but that's that. It's just super beautiful being out. Anytime we go out with a camera, it's always great, but being out here by the water is just beautiful. It's been so hot in the valley that it's kind of a nice treat. There's a couple other compositions around here, too, that I kind of want to work on. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to grab the camera and see if I can bring something else up. So I can confidently say that I was pretty happy with this one. Some of it turned out a little dark right here in particular. Kind of this rock right there, I was a little worried that I was going to lose some detail, but uh, that was actually intentional. So 
The highlights up here in these rapids right here were so bright that if I had gone much brighter on my exposure, I would have actually blown this out um, in some of these areas up here too. So that was a conscious decision to expose it the way it is. And considering I'm still learning my metering technique and all, and the fact that the exposure turned out how I expected, instead of being a complete surprise, I think is a win for me. So it seems to indicate that I'm growing or at least improving a little bit on my technique. Now the overall exposure is dark. There is that to deal with, but these areas here that are really dark, um, I was actually able to pull all the detail that I needed out when I was scanning it in. So no problems there. As far as sharpness goes, I've got depth of field all the way from the foreground here in the corners all the way to the back. So I was really happy with that. The focus was dead on, depth of field was no issue. I'm really pleased to see that there's no color cast on this one. It looks, the colors actually look pretty, pretty correct anyway. It's a little blue in the water here, but that's kind of to be expected. This was with the Lee Landscape Polarizer, which does have a warming effect on it. It's a very, very subtle effect. It's not near as strong as something like an 81 series warming filter or something like that, but it does have just a little bit of warmth built into it. So that probably helped me out a little bit. Compositionally, I think I framed it as best as I could. Uh, there was pretty limited areas to stand here. There's some massive boulders here. So I really had to kind of work with what I was given here as far as places to set the tripod up. And the water is moving way too fast to even consider trying to get down in the water to take this shot. That would have been a nightmare. But overall, uh, yeah, I was really pleased with that. These are just supposed to be test shots, but um, I actually got something I was really happy with. So that, that was quite a treat. So I'm set up now on this rock wall that's just kind of right alongside the creek, uh, next to the road too, so sorry if there's any road noise. Shooting kind of an abstract shot here. Uh, I've actually got my camera in a pretty funny position. Uh, maybe something you don't often see with a large format camera being this low to the ground, but, but I found these really interesting lines in the way that the rock's worn, kind of right next to where the rock meets the river rock, like the pebbles on the, on the bottom of, the, of this little creek bed. Uh, so I've lined that up in the corner of my composition. You can see all my camera movements in action right now, too. I'm using pretty much all of them. Uh, just because of the angle I got my camera at, mixed with proximity to the rock wall, and trying to just keep that plane of focus traveling through the image. Um, to be honest, I'd be pretty impressed if I get this entire photo sharp. It's a pretty challenging combination of camera movements to get this all at least relatively focused. Uh, I stopped all the way down to f45 and at that uh, it gave me an exposure time of four seconds it's pretty monochromatic scene so i went for black and white on this one so i'm shooting t max 100 black and white negative film and i exposed one sheet i'm not shooting doubles today because i'm not really going for portfolio grade shots here i just kind of want to test off these lenses make sure the shutters work uh, if the photo doesn't turn out i can always come back and shoot it again so that was quite a pain to get down that low to the camera to be able to focus and see the ground glass. So it's pretty painful on the knees with all this river stone and stuff, but uh, I think I got it. So anyway, so I hope that turns out. Uh, there's some other interesting patterns in this rock face that I might set up on them and at least attempt to get the camera lined up on and see if I can, you know, score another shot or two out of this. So first off, I was really pleased to see that I have depth of field and focus all the way along this. The plane of focus skims this wall and all these rocks are sharp. I wasn't sure I was going to get that. I was using uh, some compound camera movements there that I was a little, and it was a weird, awkward angle to try to see the ground glass because the camera's so low to the ground. Uh, so I wasn't really sure what to expect there. I almost expected to see the focus fall off. But to my surprise, I've actually got this all in focus. Now it is a wide angle lens, so it shouldn't be all that difficult to get depth of field with it. However, I was super, super close to my subject here in the foreground and the distance was quite a bit further from the camera. So, so this is probably about as extreme of a case as I think I'm expecting to use this lens in. And I'm just really happy to see that it worked and I was able to make it work. Now for the exposure, uh, it's a little thin. Some of these, I mean, these are all mid-tones, so I guess this might not be completely inappropriate exposure wise for the film 
However, uh, I probably would have preferred a little more contrast. I was visualizing more contrast. What I didn't realize, though, at the time, until recently, I was kind of putting together my own little cheat sheet. I didn't realize that TMAX 100 actually experiences reciprocity failure really early. So even that one second exposure, you have to add time. And I wasn't aware of that at the time. So this actually ended up a little bit underexposed, uh, according to their data sheet. So anyway, that was an opportunity for learning for me. Um, and now I know to watch for that when I'm shooting black and white and just add a little exposure time. Compositionally, uh, I can tell you that this looked more promising when it was upside down and backwards. <laughs> uh, it's fine. It's a test shot. But I think I, I don't think it translated quite as well when you flip it correct. Um, it's okay. It's probably not my favorite exposure. But uh, I don't know. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, maybe I'm just being a little harsh on myself, but I thought it was kind of meh. But maybe you feel different. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Just about four feet higher than that last composition. Uh, uh, sorry, I got dark cloth hair. <laughs> uh, but about four feet above that last shot that I took, uh, there was another composition that I wanted to set up on. Some pebbles kind of stacked up in the cracks along this wall. Kind of the same idea though, it's just kind of skimming the plane of focus along the, the wall here. So I had to use a lot of different movements. So front tilt, rear tilt, uh, front swing, rear swing, uh, all of them, they're pretty much all in use right here. And when you're trying to like judge focus on the ground glass, like this is, this lens is an f4.5. You'll never get everything in focus like that. It's with the aperture that wide open, you really got to stop it down to really see if you actually have everything in sharp. I mean, I'll start with it wide open so I can see what I'm doing on the ground glass to compose. But once I start getting the loop out and trying to judge critical focus, I'll stop it down to like f8. Um, otherwise, you'll sit there and move the camera back and forth forever and never get it actually in focus because the aperture's too wide open. And I don't shoot it there anyway, you know, I'm shooting it at 45, so uh, that extended depth of field kind of makes it a little more forgiving. So I think I got this one in focus. I'm a little more confident about this one than I was the one lower to the ground just because it was a lot harder to see the ground glass. And so this one, same settings at 45, four seconds. T-Max 100 black and white film, same same parameters as the last shot. So that's two along the same, you know, 20 foot section of granite wall or whatever stone it is. It looks kind of like granite. Um, just been super nice just sitting here working, taking my time. Uh, sound of the creek and the nice breeze. It's just been really nice. So I'm motivated to keep shooting more compositions. All my, everything I'm shooting is in shade and the sun's behind it. So it's going to stay that way for quite a while. And it's just, yeah. So this one's kind of the same story, exposure-wise, it's all mid-tones. Compositionally, I think I like it better than the other black and white photo. It's just some rocks that were kind of tucked up in these cracks in the wall up here. And I thought it was interesting. It's it's probably still not, you know, a portfolio image, but, you know, for a test shot, I just thought that was pretty good. Sharpness is good. Depth of field was also not an issue on this one, kind of like the other black and white where I had, to, you know, some compound camera movements on the front standard, which uh, this was not as extreme as the other composition. However, there was still quite a bit of movement going on here. So I'm happy to see that my plane of focus follows the wall and the angle of my subject just fine. But once again, uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comments, what you think, whether you like either of these or none of these or... <laughs> So that's all the shot test shots I took with this particular lens. I had a couple other lenses that I tested that'll be in uh, future videos and I'll have some more images from those. 
Uh, but for the 90 millimeter Nikon Nikkor uh, f4.5 lens that I picked up, that was that was those were my test shots, and I can say it was honestly a, quite a pleasure to shoot with. Uh, it was super easy to focus. Um, I was able to do some pretty severe movements without running into vignetting, which was a big deal to me because with these exposures anyway, so far it doesn't look like I really require the use of a center ND. So some shooters with these lenses, once as the wider they get, uh, they'll have light fall off just by the nature and the physics of the optics. Um, and it doesn't seem to be a problem for me in 4x5 film here. It might actually be if you were running like a panoramic longer 120 film back or something like that, that requires a wider coverage than 4x5 film does. Uh, but I don't seem to have that issue here, so I'm happy with that because center NDs are really expensive and I don't want to buy one. <laughs> anyway, those were my test exposures, so hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, let me know by uh, hitting that thumbs up button down below. And maybe while you're down there, consider subscribing and ring my bell if you want to be notified when I release new videos. And with that, uh, hope to catch you in the next one.